Greetings all, welcome if you're new, welcome back if you're not. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at using Scalar as a MIDI effect uh, to drive Scalar, actually. And uh, cause it's got some pretty interesting uh, combinations when you start playing with uh, the two Scalars. So we're gonna use Roland Zen Beats mainly just because it is a simple tool to apply MIDI effects. Not all DAWs support external MIDI effects. For example, Studio One does not. Uh, your DAW of choice might, but uh, Zen Beats is a simple uh, and actually surprisingly powerful little tool uh, that will allow that. So we got an instance of Scalar here. I just double check, make sure it's set to its default state by right mouse clicking on Scalar and hitting Clear State. I'm just going to go over here, and we can do that. You'll see our plugins. Uh, add audio effect is pretty obvious, but if you right mouse click on that, you can also say Add MIDI effect. So what we're going to do is going to go in and grab. Another instance of the exact same scalar. And when we're talking about scalar here, we're talking about the scalar of the VST, not scalar the audio effect. Scalar the audio effect is a separate uh, VST that's plugged or that's installed when you install scalar, which allows scalar to listen to chord information or, or audio and extract chord data. But we're actually just using two instances of the standard scalar VST. So we'll bring the second instance up over here. And if we play that, tap on those, you'll hear it. And if we play over here, but if you look over on the right, you'll see the note playing because we're just passing the MIDI from this scaler directly into this scaler. The instrument that's um, selected here makes no difference whatsoever. Just to make sure there's no confusion, we'll turn that off. All right, and we get that set up as is. So, and when you're driving uh, or using scaler to scaler like this, where I've find it particularly interesting is when you start pushing various performance patterns and, and performance styles through. Uh, this gets pretty deep pretty quickly, uh, but I'm going to hit some examples. Hopefully we'll give you a jumping off point that you can explore some of this stuff yourself. So let's just go ahead and grab a sequence here. And let me look at my notes. Uh, let's just do uh, basic one. And uh, we're going to drive. So basic one. Uh, is if we leave this un, nothing turned on over here, let's grab some chords. Let's just, I don't know, let's do, uh, I don't know, C Dorian. Let's just drag these down into here into a pattern. Now, if we play this, that's what our basic performance one sounds like, right? And right now, we're, this scaler is not doing anything other than just passing it through. Now, if we change the performance mode on this scaler, and this is going to sound pretty bad. Right? Sounds like a mess. Well, because it is a mess. Now, that being said, there are both combinations of these performances that sound very interesting. And there's ways to tune up that mess or tighten up that mess using quantize and swing settings and things like that. Uh, we may get into that a little bit. I don't want this video to run too long, but I do have a tendency of running a little bit longer than I planned. So in this case, we're just going to grab... A on this guy, we're going to set this one to actually let me go back over here. Let me change this to sequence. Let's go to sequence here. Okay. And sequence basic one. So if we turn this guy off, this is what we're getting. That's sequence one. If we come over here and we turn on this side, perf, and we're going to select perf 10 because I went through and tried to find some ones that were pretty, that sounded okay from the start. And we're gonna set that, let's start it with this one. And that's what we get out of that. So if we can slow this down a little bit. Now, what you'll hear on this speed, you can hear some overlapping notes. And the reason for that is because Scalar is interpreting on this side, obviously information that's coming through. And sometimes that interpretation lands with a nice clean set of notes and sometimes it doesn't. So we can play with things like speed settings and uh, things like that to get something that sounds a little bit better. And then you can slow up uh, speed up or slow down accordingly. So let's go ahead and let this play for a minute. Let's move this back to this 
little tighter. Now if we slow this input down. You'll start to get a sense of what you can do with this stuff. So what's also interesting when you're starting to play with these things is, is cycling through different instruments because the way an instrument responds um, from a speed perspective, uh, how quick it uh, how quick it responds and how, how what the sustain is like can change things dramatically. So let's change, let's bounce this down. I'm just playing with stuff. No idea what we're going to find here, but it'll give you a sense. So let's change that to the staccato, uh, hybrid staccato. Now, one of the things you can do with those sometimes, whether or not this will work, I'll let you, uh, we'll find out here in a second. Sometimes when you get those overlapping notes, you can start to play with some of the other timing settings. So for example, something as simple as just turning on play quantize, many times will clean that up. So, so now we don't have the same overlapping notes as we did before. That's a deep session. We can go all go all kinds of places uh, with that, but I'll let I'll leave that there. Let's do a couple other quick examples. Let's set this one uh, to let's set our input MIDI to uh, let's do rhythm. If I can read my own handwriting over here, and on uh, I'm sorry. Let's go rhythms and uh, and Anata, and then Sonata, and we turn this off so we can see what that sounds like. Sorry. Speed that up a little bit. All right, just a simple, simple rhythm in that. So now if we take the our other scaler, our performance scaler over here, and we set that one back to the same performance that we were listening to before. Now we get a whole different feel for that same performance. We turn that off. Turn it back on. up a little bit. All right. A couple other examples here. Let's just use something as simple as an ARP. Let's just go over here. Let's grab our arpeggio and uh, let's just do, leave it default for now. And on this side, uh, let's do, I don't know, let's do performance. And uh, how about Vivace and Q. All right, so let's do without. So remember, just a simple arc pattern. If we turn our performance on, so we can hear that extra note dropping in. Again, sometimes we turn off the play quantiles. Oh, there we go. Kind of interesting. Sometimes you get just a tonal change by running this through. Other times you'll get a uh, rhythm or melody change, rhythm change. Now if we extend this play speed, or excuse me, we extend the note size on this end. Right now we're just playing an eighth. Let's go to a quarter. Let's see what that sounds like. There you go. So by just increasing the note length over here, effectively lengthening the amount of MIDI uh, note information or per note, it allows the performance on this side to use that 
and drive a longer duration of this whatever this particular performance is playing. So let's back this out a second. Let's just drop this back. Let's drop this back down to maybe sixteenths. All right. So what's happening now is we get sixteenth notes in here. Scalers attempt to add a performance or use that note to play a performance um, is not letting scale, it's not giving much of that performance an, an opportunity to play through, easiest way to think about it. But if I extend that or make that longer, let's set that, uh, let's cut it in half or make it 50% longer. Listen to that and let's go again. Let's go, let's make another 50% longer. All simply by changing the duration, in this case, of what's being driven over into scalar on this side. Now, this can result in some pretty interesting things and it can result in stuff that's completely unusable, but the goal of this video is to give you a sense that there's some things you can do within scalar uh, together, uh, with scalars together, that you would never have as just a single instance of scalar or actually just using Scalar as a MIDI effect on a standard instrument. So if we slow this in, we can also, like I said, we can do it on both sides. So we're slowing down on this side the speed at which Scalar is applying its performance, uh, performance, uh, performance, performance, <laughs> performance uh, to the Scalar, to the notes that are coming through. We can speed it up the other direction. All right, so now that, unusable. Now, let's see if we can find a way to calm that down. So first place I might check is by going into Quantize. See where that change a little bit? Actually, when you're working with Quantize, one thing you may want to do is open up your settings. Then you can make changes down here. Because one of the problems when you're making changes to Quantize in here, unless you're in it and changing it, can't see what you're changing. And then here it'll change. But here we can see, depending on how big your screen is, you can see that we're on fourth at 50. So by changing my quantize, sometimes I can find patterns and uh, playback speeds that uh, this sound better than others. The other place I can look is I can go into swing. Sometimes that will give me some interesting things. Again, not trying to teach you to make music, really trying to teach you how to play with the tools. Let's look at uh, one other area where this particular technique comes in pretty well. Let's clear both these states. So clear state. Let's clear this state. Get us back to the top. And let's take a look at driving the bass sequence into an ARP, for example. So if we go on this side and we come up, we'll just take our standard bass and let's grab some scales. Let's, I don't know, let's do, let's change. Let's maybe let's grab an E. Uh, e minor on that. Okay, let's bring these guys in. And if we play that, that's our bass line, this basic bass. Now if we come over here and we set this, for example, why don't we just set it to uh, an arpeggio? What happens when what happens when you do that? So if we do this, so we went from to Slow it down on this end. Now because the arpeggio doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, not really doing much to the performance side of things, it's not as sensitive to speed of playback coming in. But again, you can play with both sides of the... Let's see what happens if we go over here real quick. Let's We're not going to get much swing on this side, sorry, because our input 
in this case, uh, is really what's going to dictate that more than the R side of the equation. Might impact a little bit, but chances are we can never hear it. Let's go ahead and turn that guy off for a second. And what if we run that base through the sequence, for example? Let's go to sequences and uh, let's run that guy and see what happens with that. If we wanted to grab, listen to what maybe something with a little variation in its uh, chords would sound like. Turn this guy off. All right, that sounded kind of interesting. Let's run in just a baseline through a sequence. And we could do the other thing, we could swip flop it around, right? So for example, we could run, I don't know, let's just do this. Let's try to see what happens if we run a sequence through a baseline or through our bases. Right? Let's slow that down. All right. So sometimes, for example, um, when you here's a great example when you make a change to what's happening on the performance side sometimes the notes that are coming through don't line up effectively with what the performance is trying to accomplish and you you won't hear anything so keep moving through your patches and you'll find things that you didn't know were there then once you find something you can start to play with it so anyway that's just uh ran a little longer than i wanted but this stuff can get so deep it's sometimes it's hard to uh, it's hard for me to stay on on script so to speak so hopefully this was helpful uh, thanks for those who subscribed kind of surprised we're getting some subscribers in here if there's anything you'd like to learn a little bit more about or explore uh, please drop them in the comments and uh, we'll go from there until then have a great one